TII item 446, October 31st, 2017, iOS 11.1 and iOS 11.2 beta 1. Welcome to Today in iPhone. Yeah, I like it a lot. Today in iPhone. Hey, Gola! Oh, yeah. My beautiful iPhone, which I never have out of my hand and that I do everything with and has become an extension of who I am. Today's show is brought to you by Eero. For free overnight shipping to the U.S. and Canada, visit eero.com and at checkout, select overnight shipping, then enter promo code TII to make it free. Today's episode is sponsored by Texture. Go right now to texture.com slash TII to get your free trial. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Rob, and you are listening to the Today in iOS podcast. First up, I want to thank Porter from Porter's Podcast. Oh, and my son for sending in the music you hear in the background. Porter said, hey, Dad, this song was recorded on an iPad Pro using GarageBand. The song is called Your Choice, and I transferred it to your computer using AirDrop. Regards, Porter. Well, thanks, Porter, for the music. And folks, I will put the full song at the end of the episode. Also want to thank David for sending in the artwork for today's show. David wrote the following. Hi, Rob. I created this with the app Snapseed. It is of the Boylan Street Apple Store in Boston. Regards, David. Well, thanks, David, for sending in this picture, which you can... Well, whenever you think of Halloween, you kind of think of New England and Boston. So, folks, you can see this artwork in the free TI app via the bonus button or episode 446, or at Instagram.com slash Today in iOS, and also at Facebook.com slash Today in iOS. If you have some artwork and or music you have created on your iOS device that you would like to share with the audience, please email to me at Today in iOS at gmail.com. Please make sure to include which app or apps you use to create said artwork and or music. Hi, Rob. This is Dan from Michigan. Uh, I did want to let to let you know that uh, you're going to release the hounds for iOS 11. If someone owns an, an iPhone 6, uh, I would definitely, in the words of Megan Trainer, say no, 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 no. Uh, it is horrible on my 6. And I've even done a clean install, raced everything. It is the most buggiest, laggiest thing ever. Uh, if I try to use Siri, uh, it might decide to make a phone call, it usually takes about two minutes. I always sit there wondering when it will finally be done and thinking, why did I not just click a button uh, or, or search what it was myself? And I think that's horrible. Do not update an iPhone 6 to iOS 11, whatever you do. Thanks. Love the show. Release the hounds. Dan, thanks for the feedback. And I agree, iOS 11, 11 11.0.1.2, 0.2.0.3, nope, don't want to do that. But 11.1 is finally the iOS 11 update you and everyone else was waiting for. And it offers a major security fix for the crack Wi-Fi attack. This is the one that could let hackers decrypt Wi-Fi traffic, hijack connections, conduct man-in-the-middle attacks, and listen in on a communication sent from an affected device. So, you know, nothing major. iOS 11.1 was released today, October 31st, to the masses, and it does improve performance on iPhone 6s, at least from what I've read. I haven't tested on iPhone 6, um, but I do have it on the iPhone 6 Plus, and it seems to be working fine there, and I've got it on a few other devices. So, beyond the security fix iOS 11.1 brings over 70 new emojis, allows 3D touching on the edge to enter into the app switcher. It does not address any of the issues with the podcast app. Um, They also added grouped emoji suggestions. There are subtle animation changes. How subtle, you ask? Well, one video showing the difference actually had to go to slow motion to show you how these subtle differences are. Uh, yeah, if you need to go to slow-mo to show a difference, is is it really a difference? Okay, they did actually give some new custom action additions to assistive touch. So there is that one actual real addition for iOS 11.1. Additionally, where you have uh, the assistive touch button on the home, on the screen, when you tap it and it brings up the dock of icons, they are now closer to where the button was on the screen rather than always bringing up the uh, 
dock of icons in the middle of the screen. Overall, 11.1 is not what you would expect from a single dot update. It's not a huge change, but it does have two of the remaining items that um, it does give it merit, and that's bug fixes and optimizations. If you are at iOS 11.0.x, you really should or almost need to have to update to 11.1. If you have not updated to iOS 11, then this is the one you can finally update to. I am in the midst of getting all our devices updated to iOS 11.1, and that includes getting my wife's device and all, all the devices that aren't going to be moving up to uh, one of the new betas. I will get to 11.1 public release gold master, which again, I can now say release the hounds. Today, October 31st, Apple also released to the masses Watch OS 4.1. This version intros support for streaming Apple Music content directly to your LTE-enabled Series 3 Apple Watch, a new radio app which offers a Beta 1 and other Apple Music stations directly onto your Apple Watch is also included with 4.1. There is now a Wi-Fi toggle for forcing the Apple Watch to use LTE when you turn off Wi-Fi. 4.1 also brings Gym Kit, which allows your Apple Watch to pair directly with supported gym equipment. Plus, lots of bug fixes and optimizations, and that Wi-Fi security fix that was in iOS 11.1. Yeah, that's here in 4.1 as well for watchOS. Hey, Rob, this is Lee in Portland. I talked to you about the Apple Watch and it putting up the play on the podcast, which is driving me nuts. And got a lot of wonderful listeners helping me out and make it to where as I'm driving a semi-truck down the road, I can look at the time and not actually listen to a podcast or screw with the podcast. And the crown is working too now. But you brought up the question about podcast problems, and I actually have a major, two major things that I hate about the podcast app. One, it sucks battery life like you wouldn't believe. And I've gone as, to the extent of turning off all auto polls to where it's manual, and at the morning, I swipe down to pull all the podcasts. So when I hop on my truck and go, it's there. It's still eating the battery like you would not believe. I can take Audible. I can take the audiobooks, I can listen to music. And it's just fine. All I'm doing is downloading a file, just like an MP3. Why is it eating my battery? That's one. Two, when I do do the swipe down, and this has been for a long time, even in iOS 10, I constantly have got to click the download button or stop the download button and click the download button. Otherwise, it stays in a downloading state where the ring starts going around and it doesn't actually download the file, which is the podcast MP3, right? I don't know. Those two things are really bugging the living crap out of me. And if there was any way you could add that to the list of things that you are going to send to Apple over the podcast app, I would much appreciate it. That would make my life a lot easier, especially the battery life. I've got a Mophie juice pack, and it wastes that as well on another device. And by the way, I'm using an iPhone 7 Plus. Thank you. Hey, and thanks for the show, man. You're a big help. Bye. Lee, it's safe to say with all the feedback that we're seeing here about Apple's podcast app, it needs some additional love and care and work. Per it sucking down the battery life, you may want to check how frequently you are re-pinging feeds it's supposed to be like once every four or six hours, but I noticed that recently that default changed to once an hour. So maybe you change it to where it repings the feeds for the podcast that you have subscribed to once a day. So get that frequency down to once a day, and that should help. And I should point out, go to each of your podcasts in uh, under the library, go to shows, and then for each show... Go in and click on the, the settings buttons. And, well, it's the three, it's a circle with the three dots, and then click on settings. And then underneath settings, go to custom settings and check under custom for refresh every. And it's probably stuck at one hour. Go ahead and change that to day. So default every day. So that means only once a day it's going to ping your feed. So there'd be less times that it's going out and pinging your feed. And that should help with your battery life. So there's one thing that you can do, or you can set it to manually, or you can set it to once a week, but get it off of the once an hour. Uh, I think that is one thing that's going to be causing you some battery life issues with the podcast app. And finally, on Halloween, 
Apple released TV OS 11.1. This is, uh, has a, I've pretty much been saying, as boring an update as you could have for a single dot update after multiple betas. And now the public release, all I see people saying is bug fixes and optimizations. And oh yeah, the Wi-Fi security fix, which was also rolled out for iOS 11.1 and watchOS 4.1 is here with tvOS 11.1. If you have an iOS device, Apple Watch, or Apple TV, there are updates waiting for you, and I do recommend you do them specifically for the security fix, but also for all the other bug fixes and optimizations. Release the hounds! On Monday, October 30th, Apple released to the devs iOS 11.2 beta 1. Per what is new, first and foremost, the podcast app now finally plays the next episode when you get to the end of the current episode, making it easier to listen to back-to-back-to-back episodes. Some other changes, including fixing the latency issue with the calculator app, which made it look like it could not add if you tapped too quickly. This, again, is due to latency issues due to animations. If you do update to iOS 11.1, note, You will have this issue with the calculator app if you do type too quickly. So type a little slower on the calculator app. Make sure it's registering the right keystrokes or taps when you're putting in the numbers. If you double-click the side power button, no longer does it lock the device. And you have to quickly double-click the side button, that is. But I can confirm that is the case. It does not lock the device if you double-click real quick. This is likely having to do something with the iPhone 10 functionality with Face ID. We'll talk more about that later. There are notification settings uh, for the TV app. An update to the live photo loading animation. You can now control AirPlay 2 enabled devices such as the 4K Apple TV. There is now a new now playing option for controlling content on the Apple TV in Control Center. And there are reports of the TV app being introduced in Sweden and Norway. I did update right away on purpose this time to iOS 11.2 beta 1, figuring as I would be updating soon to the iPhone 10, so why not? And this time, the beta 1 has been much, much more stable than we've been used to for beta 1s in the past betas. So kudos to Apple for getting 11.2 beta 1 to actually be halfway usable, mostly usable. Uh, Again, I still don't recommend early betas for your primary phone or device like I just did. I only did this because I know I'm going to be updating to the iPhone 10 soon. But it is nice to see it much, much more stable than the last iOS 11.1 beta 1 was, was just unusable. And of course, if there is an iOS beta release, there is a watchOS beta release as well, 4.2 beta 1, to be precise. Per what is new, to be precise, no one seems to know. Seems it is bug fixes and optimizations for the most part. And also on October 30th, Apple introduced tvOS 11.2 beta 1. And well, of course, given how boring tvOS 11.x updates have been, there's nothing to report, right? Um, well, no. There actually are reports of new features in tvOS 11.2 Beta 1, which includes automatic mode switching to native frame rate and dynamic range of video content with Apple TV 4K, support for switching Apple TV 4K display output to SDR for apps that are GPU-bound when running in HDR, and restoring unwatched category in home sharing for movies, TV shows, and home videos. Well, it's about time there is something more than bug fixes and optimizations for a tvOS update. But yeah, both of those are in this update as well. I want to welcome Eero back to the show as a sponsor. This is a product I absolutely love and allows me to get the fastest Wi-Fi at my house with the best coverage everywhere. Eero, as in E-E-R-O, makes a Wi-Fi mesh network for your home. Let me give some background on my testing pre- and post-Eero. I checked my previous supposedly high-speed Wi-Fi system, and right next to the base station, that was the best I could ever get, and it was 90 megabits per second down and 30 megabits per second up. 
And typically it was usually in the 60 to 70 megabits per second down and 20 to 25 megabits per second up, which when you have Google gigabit ethernet, it's not a good use of the fiber. With Eero, I get 350 to 400 megabits up and down regularly. Before Eero, I was connecting with the ethernet cable to my Thunderbolt port each morning on my laptop, no more. And those speeds I mentioned, I'm getting them from my MacBook Pro, my iPhone 7 Plus, my iPad Pros, and more. The speed increase is incredible. Thank you, Eero. No more connecting that Ethernet cord. Before I received it, I was so crossing my fingers, hoping this would be half as good as they said it would be, but it wound up being much, much better. I'm really blown away at having over 400 megabits per second of speed via Wi-Fi most of the time. It literally was breaking most iOS apps for speed testing. Apple talks about how fast the Wi-Fi chips are. This is the first time I have been able to actually test those claims out. Kudos, Apple, Google Fiber, and of course, Eero for unleashing all of my iOS devices. This is the second generation Eero unit, which has added a third 5 gigahertz radio. And it is a mesh network, just like that at the office buildings, but now for your home. I set up my main unit in my office, connected it via Ethernet cable to my Google Fiber router, then went into the kitchen, plugged in the Beacon unit into a standard wall outlet, set it up quickly, then set up uh, in our bedroom, which is as far away from my office as possible in our house. It was about 10 to 15 minutes to set it all up. It was really easy with an app for your iOS device that lets you monitor all Wi-Fi devices connected now or that have been. And we have over 18 showing. Yikes. And you only need to hardwire connect the base station unit. The beacons, you just plug into the wall outlets, and they even have a nightlight. If you go to eero.com, E-E-R-O.com, and enter promo code TII, you'll get free overnight shipping to the U.S. and Canada. Again, go to eero.com, and at checkout, select overnight shipping, then enter promo code TII to make it free. If you are getting an iPhone 10 or just received an iPhone 8 or 8 Plus or a 4K Apple TV, and you want to unlock the full Wi-Fi speed of your devices, get yourself an Eero Mesh Network in your house. The base station unit sits flat, and you power it with a USB-C connector. It is very nice looking, very Apple-esque white design. It also has a new thread radio for lower power devices like ring, my Ring doorbell and other Wi-Fi enabled IoT devices. This is the best, best, best Wi-Fi I've ever tested or heard of, hands down. Thank you, Eero, for unleashing all of my Apple products. And sorry if that was a little long, but I really, really do love my Eero. And if you're getting a new Apple product, you really want to check it out. Hello, Rob. This is Ben in Clovis, California. Just calling with an, an update on the purchase of my iPhone 10. Actually, my wife's iPhone 10. Uh, it is currently 12.04 a.m. Pacific time. The Apple Store is still not available. However, the AT&T website did come up five minutes early. I was able to purchase uh, my wife's new phone and got confirmation that it will be delivered on November 3rd. I got this confirmation at 11.57 p.m. So before midnight, I was able to purchase through the AT&T website. Hope you have good luck, too. Love the show. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ben, for your feedback and for getting your voicemail to me before I was even done pre-ordering my iPhone 10. Per my pre-order experience, I was refreshing the Apple Store app on my iPhone and the Apple Store on my MacBook Pro, and it was not until almost five minutes past the top of the hour that the Apple Store came up on my computer first, which is much different than the past pre-orders, where it was the app on my iPhone that came up first. Less than two minutes later, I had my iPhone 10 Silver 20, 256 gig T-Mobile version ordered. I had the email confirmation email in my inbox by seven minutes after the hour and had this wah, wah, wah message that delivered, uh, that they said it was going to deliver between November 10th and November 17th. I was bummed. I mean, I tried my best to get on right away, did all I could do, and I was going to be pushed out one to two weeks past launch date and when I would be traveling, which would really was bum me out. But then, 36 hours later, my delivery date was pulled in 
to November 3rd. Thanks, Tim. Actually, a bunch of other people also reported the same thing. November 10th to 17th deliveries uh, being pulled into November 3rd. So quite a few people had that happen. And I want to thank Joe uh, G on the Google Plus community. He had offered to actually send me his iPhone 10 to review when I initially reported a week to two week delay in getting it. Joe, your offer was greatly appreciated. Her watching the Apple store that night, by 35 minutes past the hour, shipping had slipped to four to five weeks for all carriers and all models. Two hours after the pre-order started, lead time was showing five to six weeks for all models of the iPhone uh, 10 on all carriers. And that is where it is now five plus days later. And yeah, it hasn't changed at all. So from that two-hour point, if you were more than two hours late, you are in the five to six-week range now for any new orders for an iPhone 10. Jeff calling from Connecticut. 3.14 a.m. on a pre-order day. Ugh, nuts. So was ready to go, and it's the um, App Store app was just not going fast, so we had the computers in front of us as well as the app on the iPad and the iPhone and the for me, the uh, the website went up faster. Had a lot of problems. Kept glitching out. My PIN number wasn't being recognized, all that stuff. The App Store app finally went up. Tried that there for my partner's phone and got only so far, and then it was airing out there. Grueling experience, but it's done, over with. Got one phone delivering November 10th, the other phone delivering November 17th. I haven't been this nervous of buying a product since I purchased my first house. So, pretty interesting. Thanks, Rob. Talk to you soon. Hi, Rob. Jeff from Connecticut again. I had called on uh, pre-order day to state that uh, I was ordering frantically at 3.01 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, even with an iPad, an iMac, and two iPhones in the order process, my Verizon uh, 64 gig in silver, I got shipping dates November 10th to the 17th. So I was a little dismayed, but as some others have, may have seen, we've gotten an update to those delivery dates, and uh, I was one that got uh, the update to launch day, November 3rd. Problem was, I got that notification about 20 minutes after I called up Sprint, who still had phones getting shipped out on what they call launch day, November 3rd, and so I said, well, let me just buy the phone, and I'll bring it over to Verizon, and uh, the equipment is supposedly compatible figured I would do that. So then I got the email saying that my launch date or my uh, delivery day got moved up. And so then I had to call Sprint back and cancel the order. And that took about two hours to do. So uh, live and learn about that. But uh, great news. I'm going to be getting my phone on lunch day. Very excited. Can't wait. And it already currently shows preparing to ship. And uh, we only have four more days before we see the phone. So fingers crossed we'll have it on launch day. Start to use it and we'll call in with first thoughts. Rob, thanks again. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff, for the feedback. And here's some more feedback that was emailed in on pre-order night. Hi, Rob. Store not working for several minutes. First access was through Safari on iPhone at about four minutes after 2 a.m. Central Time. My Apple Pay didn't work, so it took me until 2.11 to finish purchase. By that time, had moved from November 3rd delivery to November 17th to 24th. Regards, David D. And then, hi Rob, I ordered my 64 gig silver iPhone 10 in Sweden, and after preparing my Apple Store app carefully, I was surprised it did not come online at 9.01, nor did the website. Around 9.10, 10 minutes after the hour, when the website came online, I placed my order there. Delivery date is inform informed to be between the November 13th and 20th, now, while writing this, the no November uh, at 20 minutes past the uh, hour, the Apple Store app finally came online. Keep up the good work with the show. Best regards, Johan. Hi there, Rob. It's Paul in Lawrenceville, and just wanted to give you an update on iPhone 10 ordering. I waited up, and I had the Apple Store app running on a couple of devices and would refresh it regularly. But even by five minutes after midnight Pacific time, the Apple Store had not opened up for orders. 
and I quickly opened a Safari window, went to apple.com, and there they were sitting there to order. So the Apple Store technique didn't work so good this time around. Anyway, placed the order at 3.05 a.m. Eastern Time, which would be 12.05 Pacific. And by then, it was already in a two- to three-week shipping interval. So we got it, and the 256 gig is the way to go. And we'll see if they can beat that shipping interval. But now I'm starting to wonder how many, if any, were really available to ship by November 3rd as opposed to being in the stores November 3rd. And I even checked the option of local pickup and on any date in the future, my store here in the um, Lawrenceville area wasn't going to have any of them, nor did any of the others in the Atlanta, Georgia area have any delivery dates. So looks like some of the shortage rumors may have been true or the order demand outstripped supply very quickly for the November 3rd launch day. Anyway, thought I'd just share that with you. Uh, Hope you did better on your ordering. Talk to you later. Back to you in my bag. Hello, Rob. Here is my iPhone 10 purchase experience beginning at half an hour prior to launch of the pre-order. I had my iPad at the ready with my Apple Store app running. I also had my PC running with two browser windows, one for Apple.com and the other for AT&T.com. The AT&T website had a countdown timer on it. Surprisingly, when the timer hit 4 minutes 57 seconds to go, it opened up. I quickly ordered my wife's iPhone 10 Space Gray 256 and was done by t- uh, three minutes to prior to the hour. I then checked the Apple Store app on my a- a- iPad but could not get in until uh, 13 minutes past the hour and saw that at that point the delivery date was one to two weeks. At this time, I began to wonder if I should order one for myself. I previously thought that... I wouldn't be upgrading my 6S Plus because I didn't think that the upgrade was significant enough, but PIDs set in and I caved. I went back to the AT&T website, ordered myself an iPhone 10 Space Gray 256 and had the order done by 24 minutes past the hour. Within minutes, I got an email confirmation on both my orders stating that my phones would be delivered November 3rd. That was a welcome surprise. I hope you had a similarly good experience. Thanks for the great show. Regards, Ben G. Well, thank you, Ben. Hi, Rob. I forgot to set an alarm. Just ordered mine at 5.41 a.m. Eastern Time, and my order is showing a delivery date of December 11th to 18th, five weeks. 256 gig, space gray. Regards, Thomas in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Thomas, 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 if you had the TI app installed and allowed for push notifications, you would have received one a few minutes prior to the start of the order. Yes, I sent out the push to remind folks prior to getting my own order in. Maybe it was that kind of karma that led to my order being pulled in. Back to the email bag. Hi, Rob. At 7.55 a.m. UK time, I sat in my kitchen with my iPhone and iPad and MacBook Pro all poised. 8 a.m. madly refreshing Apple Store app on iPhone and iPad and refreshing the page on the Apple Store website. At 8.04 a.m. iPhone suddenly links through into the iPhone 10 page in the Apple Store app. At 8.05 a.m. checkout on Silver 256 gig model with Apple Care Plus. At 8.06 a.m., Hang of guilt as American Express payment confirmation flashed on my iPhone. Ouch. But no delivery date showing yet. 8.45 a.m. The Apple Store app now says I have no recent orders. Hey, what's going on? At 9 a.m. Nope, it's just it's back and it's just a glitch. So still no delivery date. By 11.12 a.m. I log back into the app. My delivery date is the 3rd of November. Never managed to get first day delivery directly from Apple before and was all set to accept the February 2018 uh, date this time around. Uh, 11, 17 a.m. Have to tell you about this. So I download the TI app. I know it's about time and email the show. Hope you and the other listeners were also lucky like me. 
Thanks for show, Rob. Been listening for about eight years now, I guess, but this is the first time I've contacted you. Regards, Andrew A. in Wimbledon, UK. P.S. At 11.25 a.m., just realized this is going to hit my credit card a few months sooner than I thought it would. Ouch. Hey, Rob. Ryan from Seattle. Just wanted to give you a heads up and let you know about how my iPhone 10 pre-order process went last night. I didn't complete the order until about 17 minutes after, and I did get a silver 64 gigabyte AT&T version. I kept getting some error messages and some uh, you time out, you'll have to try again later messages, but I was able to order it through apple.com on my MacBook. And uh, I got the confirmation email that my order is processing 17 minutes after the hour. Anyways, just want to let you know. Thanks a lot, man. Love what you're doing with the podcast. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hi, Robert. Jason calling from Redditch UK. I uh, just went in to give you an update on my experience ordering the iPhone X. Oh, sorry, iPhone 10. I can't believe I just made that mistake on it. Anyway, um, I went on to the CE website, uh, which is one of the providers here. Um, they had an offer of uh, 100 gigabytes for the uh, iPhone 10, regardless of which uh, a storage uh, uh, option you picked. Um, 100 gigabytes uh, for the price of 25 gigabytes. And uh, interestingly, they also threw in a... Um, Beats X headphone along with that. Uh, I, I got it right on time. Uh, I was on the phone at 8 o'clock uh, local time in the UK. I was able to order it to be delivered on uh, launch day, uh, 3rd of November. Um, seeing this process, I had actually had a setup where my iMac was on the Apple website. My MacBook was on the EU website. And because I'm also switching over from O2, I had my phone on the O2 website, so I was really prepared and I was doing all of, uh, going through all of the websites at the same time I was doing on the phone just in case uh, I got the website hung at some point. But within the first 17 minutes, I was ordered and uh, I got a little bit of the third development now. Uh, oh, by the way, um, I also did take the uh, leap. Um, Remember last uh, episode, I emailed in about my prop, my dilemma with the Apple Watch. Um, I decided to uh, jump ship from O2, go over to EV. And so now I will be able to activate the LT of my Apple Watch Series 3. And also, like I say, I've got the benefit of getting this uh, Beat X coming along with the iPhone 10. It would be interesting to see how other people fared as well. Thanks for the good work, and uh, keep it up. Take care. Bye now. Thanks, everyone, for your feedback on your order experience. And we'll have more order experience and feedback like that at the end of today's episode as well. So please stick around after the outro of the episode to hear more of that feedback. Now, let's switch a little gears here. If you happen to have the new MacBook with the USB-C ports only, and you have the 29-watt USB-C power adapter, if you can get a USB-C to lightning cord and use the, that adapter, you can fast charge your iPhone 10 when you get it. How much quicker it charges? Well, I'll have to test that out and let you know. Speaking of testing, this is a comment that came into the TI app from the TI app uh, in the comment section, and this is for the last episode, and it, it, it's from Giovanni who wrote the following, quote, Everyone is having the iPhone 10 reviews, but nobody has showed how to activate and use reachability on it. Can you do that when you get your iPhone 10? And do your review that a lot of people are asking for, that some YouTubers have even said that it's an option that was taken off, but it's not, according to Redmond Pie. Love your work. Keep it up. And regards, again, this is Giovanni. And there's an unquote somewhere in there. Thanks for the suggestion, Giovanni. And I will ask you, the audience, that if you're listening right now, what test experiments do you want me to do on my iPhone 10 when I get it? Note, drop test, hammer test, burn test, and other destructive testing, um, no. But any non-destructive testing that you want me to do, please email the show at todayinios at gmail.com or call the show, 206-MOONDOG, that's 206-666-6364, or do what Giovanni did and leave a comment right inside the TI app. Switching gears once more, 
Apple will have the quarterly conference call this Thursday, the 2nd of November, at their normal time for having those conference calls. And this is their quarterly business conference call. And that will be at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Time. I will put up a blog post at todayinios.com and in the TI app right before the conference call starts. And then I'll update it throughout the call and after the call. It will be interesting to see if they give any hint on when HomePod will go on sale. But the big question, of course, is that they'll be answering is how many iPhone sales there were in the previous quarter, which, given that the iPhone X was not launched in September, kind of sort of makes the answer to the big question kind of moot. In any case, always good to hear how things go, and I am sure Apple stock will drop, given that it's now at an all-time high. Thanks once again to Texture for sponsoring our show. As I said before, Texture is essentially the Netflix of magazines. You get access to over 200 of the top magazines. And here is what is really important in the current environment. These are our real news publications. No fake news from either the right or the left or people claiming Apple is deliberately slowing down older iOS devices. We are talking real, credible news magazines like Time Magazine, The New Yorker, Macworld, Popular Science, and many others. You know the type that still believe in two verified sources before reporting something. But you only need one app and service to get all these great magazines, and that is Texture. And Texture really helps me keep track of the podcasting marketplace and the smartphone industry. That is the beauty of Texture. You get access to over 200 top magazines covering every niche with your subscription. And Texture has gone beyond delivering just the magazine itself. They've made it easy to find and enjoy articles you want to read with daily recommendations, exclusive interactive features, videos, and more. Texture is $9.99 a month, and you get over 200 magazines. But if you sign up right now at texture.com slash TII, you'll get a 14-day free trial. The magazines look great on your iPhone and iPad, and that means you have access to all the magazines anytime, anywhere. And here is what I really like. You can search for a topic across all the magazines. Search for a podcast and sort by the newest, and I can keep up to date on my day job. Why on earth would you subscribe to just a couple of magazines when you could have all of the best ones on your smartphone or tablet all the time for way less? Sign up for Texture right now and gain insider access to all the content from the world's best publications, and no trees were killed to bring you these great publications. It's all just bits, man. Once again, go to texture.com slash TII to get your free 14-day trial. Get real news from real news sources. Hello, Rob. This is Justin from Pennsylvania. I called a week or so back about worrying about how Face ID would work with purchasing in-app purchases that are easy to click on and you can make an easy accidental purchase. With reviews out, um, someone has actually answered that question. Basically, when you click an in-app purchase, you then have to double-click the side button, the power button, to authorize. So it will not just use your face, so that thing I was worried about won't be a thing, and you don't have to make it so you have to punch in the password. You can still use Face ID if you prefer. So I just want to let everyone know who's probably getting their phones this Friday, and I won't be getting mine till later, but um, just to uh, let you guys know, that double click the side button for face id and that's how you make an in-app purchase if you want to use face id for purchases just a little tip for everyone out there thank you very much have a great day bye back to email bag hi rob had a wonderful experience ordering my 64 gig iphone 10 opened the apple app and was able to connect at around one minute past the hour by 11 minutes past the hour, my order was processed and would arrive on November 3rd. First time doing a pre-order, and it was easy peasy. Regards, Mike in Stafford, Virginia. Congrats, Mike. Hi, Rob. Thought this was an was interesting article, as I usually buy an unlocked iPhone outright to use with my MNVO. Here is a link to an article titled, Best Buy Adds 100 to the Price of the 999 iPhone 10." Keep up the great work. I'm not upgrading my iPhone this year, but I'll be looking forward to hearing about you and the other listeners' experience with the iPhone 10. Regards, Amico from Iowa. First, Amico, thanks also for the PayPal donation to the show. It is always greatly appreciated. Per the link to the article, 
Yeah, Best Buy was definitely looking to take advantage of iPhone users adding an extra $100 charge to the iPhone X pre-orders because, well, they can. But just because you can does not mean you should. Boo, Best Buy, boo. Apparently, the $100 adder is just for those that buy it outright rather than the longer installment plans where they pilfer your wallet in and with other fees. Did I say boo, Best Buy, boo? But Best Buy did have this great response, and I kid you not, quote, our prices reflect the fact that no matter a customer's desired plan or carrier, or whether a customer is on a business or personal plan, they are able to get a phone the way they want at Best Buy, unquote. Um, can you say tone deaf? And yeah, no one is wanting it with an extra $100 tacked on the price. Just saying. All right, let's get into a voicemail message. Hey, Rob, it's Matt over Street. How are you? I'm wondering if you or the audience knows of any podcasts for Windows users with a format like yours, because um, I have found several on my Victor, and these guys just talk about aimless stuff too much, and they never get to the point. And I'm having a problem with Skype, and I think I'm about to fix it, but I wanted to throw it out to somebody to see if they've had this, this issue, and I know you're only iOS. So are there any podcasts out there for Microsoft Windows users, mainly Windows 10? All right, let us know. Thanks. Matt, thanks for the voicemail message. I know you're going to be shocked when I say this, but I don't listen to Windows podcasts, but I do know of a couple of good ones. Windows Central Podcast, so you might want to check that one out. And then Windows Insider Podcast, right from Microsoft. Well, technically, it's right from the Libsyn servers where it's hosted, but created and uploaded and published by Microsoft. So Windows Central and Windows Insider Podcast, the second one being from Microsoft. There is a rumor that Apple fired the engineer whose teenage daughter put up a viral video using his iPhone X last week. You think he got fired? Um, not to be heartless, but if you work for Apple, you know it's the most secretive company this side of Fort Meade. You're given one of the few iPhone X to work with, and you take it home, and your daughter goes and puts up a video, and that video goes viral. Hearing that the engineer was let go is, to say the least, not a shocker. It is sad, but not a shocker, not unwarranted given the culture of secrecy at Apple, and the fact that that person that was given that phone fully understood that, as does anybody at Apple. I mean, most of us outside of Apple understand that. So it is sad, but not a shocker. Hi, Rob. It's Kim from Salem, Oregon. And I was just listening to your uh, episode 439, and you were talking about how Apple, in their infinite wisdom, not has never, ever invited you to a single event regarding the iPhone or iOS in general. So no WWDC invites or keynote addresses or anything. That's just wrong. I mean, seriously, here you are, the first podcast ever to cover the iPhone, and they can't even invite you. And I know you explained on the episode why, but I still say it's wrong. They should be on their knees thanking you for for doing the podcast in the first place. Because you were the first person to go, hmm, I think I should report on this product and call it today an iPhone. So, come on, seriously. You were like seven episodes ahead of the actual, seven or eight episodes ahead of the whole iPhone when it dropped. Come on, seriously. That's just wrong. And then Microsoft has invited you all the time. And you've gone to their events and report on stuff. And I wish that you could do that with Apple. But nope. And Microsoft is a direct competitor to Apple. So that is just, that's unbelievable. Apple public relations really need to get their act together, in my opinion. Anyway, just thought I'd um, (laughs) weigh in on my two cents with the issue. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. Kim, from your mouths to Tim's ears, thank you for your feedback. 
And to the email bag, hey Rob, I'm a little upset after hearing the Apple Music features on the new Series 3. You're able to access your Apple Music library on the Series 3. The thing that makes me upset is that I used to be able to control my iPhone's music library from my Series 2 until the Watch OS 4 betas came out. I thought maybe that was a bug at first. Nope, it's a feature. I'm pretty disappointed that Apple would remove that perfectly fine feature just to sell the new watch. I understand I had to be tethered to my phone to do it before, but that was fine. The cellular should be the selling point of the new watch, not the exclusivity of Apple Music only for Series 3. What an incredibly corporate move to make and not caring about the customer on this one. I've never really been mad at Apple until this move. Regards, Oshkosh Josh. Josh, thanks for that, and sorry to hear your frustrations. Hi, Rob. I wanted to see an Apple TV Pro, uh, a, full, a, one, a full television with Apple TV 4K included. Uh, regards, Bruce P. And Bruce, that's just not going to happen. Not ever going to happen. I don't see Apple making a full-on television set. You got Vizio and Samsung and... Um, all these other brands that can make these low-cost TVs and people just not going to buy and pay more for the TV because it's from Apple. The Apple TV, the box that connects to your TV, yes, Apple will continue to do that. But a full-on television with the Apple TV integrated, nope. Just don't see Apple ever doing it. Hi, Rob. Funny story. I have updated my iPhone 7 Plus to iOS 11.1. Yes, I waited, but not long enough. Should have waited uh, for your latest podcast. First, a uh, funny bug when setting, and, and this is the beta that the person set it up for. First, when setting my appointment to free, as in not busy, I found that Apple made a beginner's mistake in the translation of free, as free can be translated in, to, to Dutch in two ways. Free as in not busy, or free as in free of charge, gratis. And yes, you guessed it, my appointment uh, are now sometimes gratis. Another more nasty bug is that the photos that I had made are now no longer showing up on the film roll. They are still there, but just in albums. So finding all photos I shot in the months before are in albums like selfies and videos, etc., why, oh, why didn't I just listen? Anyways, thanks, Rob, for your hard work on the podcast. Regards, Harold H. Harold, sorry that you had such issues. You may want to try again now with 11.1 or update to the Goldmaster now that it's out. Because, yes, the early 11.1 betas, they were buggy. Hello, Rob. It's Paul in Lawrenceville. I thought I would give you an update on my AirPod review that I shared with you earlier. Everything seems to be working fine. Uh, works with iPad, works with iPhone. Very smart way it adapts and uh, the double taps to uh, use Siri are great. But I learned something. I was a runner in the past and now I'm a walker. So in walking, they stay in. And even in short runs, they stay in. But when you're doing yard work, they want to bobble, at least in my ears, and tip out. And I've had a couple of times where one fell out. So I experimented. And I thought I'd share this for the listeners. I had one day on a walk, a paper towel that I was using just to mop my sweaty brow. And I thought about taking a bit of it, compressing it and shoving it right behind the back of the AirPod. And it acts not like a sponge, but acts more like a little wedge and not only does it improve the sound, it blocks out a little bit of the ambient, but it improves the sound that you're hearing in your ear canal. And I put one behind each AirPod, doesn't wiggle, jiggle, feels very secure. So that's sort of a DIY for people that might notice it. Sure, you can go and spend money on leashes and other things, but this serves two purposes. It keeps it from falling out. And it actually improves the audio a little bit. So I thought I'd pass that along. The Apple Watch that I ordered is due Friday. And I didn't think about it, but that means I've got to go to iOS 11 
before you tell me it's safe. Hopefully, you're not getting any complaints, and I look forward to hearing whether or not upgrading to iOS 11 would kill anything. I did hear today about a new bug. Uh, if you're on an open Wi-Fi with your Apple Watch 3 and you're running LTE, it will disconnect you from the LTE network. Don't know if there's any truth to that. Wondering if you have anything to add to that. Thanks a lot. Keep all the help coming. It's been great all these years listening to your advice and the advice of all the listeners. No one of us is as smart as all of us. Signing off, it's Paul from Lawrenceville. Have a great one. Paul, thanks for the feedback. And that was a look that voicemail came in a little bit ago. And to answer your question, though, even though it's timely now, I would say, if you do have an Apple Watch Series 3, make sure you do upgrade to Watch OS 4.1. You want to upgrade to that to make sure your watch is at the latest and greatest and is working correctly. Back to the email bank. Hi, Rob. Per naming, the upgrade uh, next year for the iPhone 10 will it be the XS? Will it be the 11? Will it be the 12? Or will it be the 12th for the 12th iPhone, that is? Or D, will it be other? Regards, Michael. Michael, I'll go with other. Actually, it, it can get really confusing because the iPhone 10 is not even the 10th iPhone. As this next email will point out, Hi Rob, love the show. Since my job deals with iPhone ordering for our business, I have a nice spreadsheet of different models and re release dates. Going through my list, open constantly in September, I noticed that generation numbers are all messed up even further. Original iPhone, first generation. iPhone 3G, second generation. 3GS, third generation. iPhone 4, fourth generation. It's a miracle iPhone 4S, 5th, iPhone 5, 6th, iPhone 5C, 7th, iPhone 5S, 8th, the S iPhone 6 and 6 Plus were the 9th, the 6S and 6S Plus were the 10th, the iPhone SE was the 11th, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus were the 12th, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus are the 13th, and finally the iPhone 10 is the 14th generation. Maybe next year they'll name it the iPhone XV. Probably not. They'll call it the iPhone 11. And then confusion with going back and forth with Roman numerals, there'll be a, a memes about this being the lost iPhone 2, as an II. And Android fans will make fun of them going backwards. Oh, well. Regards, Luke. Well, thank you, Luke, especially for that breakdown of how the iPhone numbers have no real correlation to the iPhone generation. Hi, Rob. This is Matt Overstreet. For the emailer that emailed me with the app suggestion. Unfortunately, I am not at and I'm with Sprint, so if anyone knows of anything that Sprint may have or anything that is accessible, please let me know. Thanks. Bye-bye. Talk dirty to me. Humus. Compost. Pumice. Silt. Gravel. Talk dirty to me. I can't. I'm as clean as the driven snow. Talk dirty to me. I'm not that kind of personal assistant. Talk dirty to me. The carpet needs vacuuming. Thanks again to Texture for sponsoring this episode. Folks, go right now to texture.com slash TII to get your free 14-day trial with access to well over 200 of the best and most popular magazines. Before we go today... I want to remind you to send in your feedback to the show, 206-666-6364. That's 206-MOONDOG, or record your feedback and email to the show at todayinios at gmail.com. The feedback can be a comment or question per something someone said in this episode, or it can be a question or rant you know, about something else, an app, a product review, good or bad, as long as it is iOS-related, it is welcomed. I am always looking for new artwork to feature that you create an iOS device, just um, put some TII branding on it, send it in. And of course, we're always looking for more music created on iOS device to play on the show. It's your show and your feedback is greatly desired. So please, emails, voicemails, send them in. Your thoughts on the iPhone 10. If you get an iPhone 10, give us your review. I want to hear your reviews of the iPhone 10. The beauty is we don't have any skin in the game. We can give honest reviews here. It's not like those reviews that you're reading out there from people that are reviewers and have to be nice if they want to get the next unit to review. 
you don't have to hold back. If there's something you don't like about the iPhone 10, let us know. If there's something you love about the iPhone 10, let us know that too, good or bad. Tell us all about your thoughts of your iPhone 10. And next episode will be right after the iPhone 10 start getting in people's hands. So please call in, email in with your own reviews of your iPhone 10. I want to get as many people to give their thoughts about their iPhone 10s, good or bad, or good and bad. Also, don't forget to check out our moderated Google Plus community by going to todayinios.com slash community. And a quick reminder, if you are an app dev or an iBook author, email me if you want your app or iBook featured in the promo giveaway segment for free. We just need the five promo codes or more to give away. Simply email me at todayinios at gmail.com. Please include a 60-second lesson or audio review of your app or iBook, indicating you are the dev or the author. Also, when you send in the promo codes, please let make sure to let me know when they expire. Today's show was again brought to you by Eero, which is by far the fastest and best Wi-Fi I have ever tested. If you go to eero.com and enter promo code TII, you will get free overnight shipping to the U.S. and Canada. Again, go to eero.com and check out select overnight shipping, then enter promo code TII to make it free. And make sure your iPhone 10 is running as fast as it can on your home network. Please check out the newly updated TI app, which is free to you. Search for TII in the iTunes app store. It's the best way to consume the show and to get push notifications each time a new episode of TI is released. It is fully voiceover friendly, of course. Please go right now and download the TI app or get the update if you already have it downloaded. And please stick around after the music. I'll have a bunch of voicemail messages that came in about people's experiences ordering, pre-ordering. So again, stick around at the end of the episode. Until the next time, I'm your host, Rob, reminding you to phone different. This show is hosted on Libsyn.com and part of the Wizard Media Network. If you are looking for hosting, go to Libsyn.com, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com, for hosting for your podcast and for creation of your own smartphone app. The Today in iOS podcast can also be found on the free Stitcher radio app. Just search for T-I-I.
Hey, Rob, this is Bruce. I just want to let you know that the uh, new uh, Apple iPhone X off the Apple Store was on at 301 and ordered by 312 Eastern Time, November 17th to the 24th, supposed to be shipped to me. Got the uh, silver 256 gigabyte. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Have a nice day. Hey, Rob. It's Will from Connecticut. I uh, just got done placing, uh, pre-ordering my iPhone 10. Uh, got up at 2.50 a.m. Eastern. Waited and waited and waited. Finally, about uh, 11 after, I was able to get onto the website. Still wasn't able to get the, the app to load. Placed my phone order reservation. And then pulled out, did an email, had 24 hours to wait or up to 24 hours to order. And then I was finally able to get the app going. I went in, ordered the phone, and placed the order. And it should be delivered somewhere between the 17th and 24th. So here's hoping uh, I get it sooner than later. Yeah. Thanks. Love the show. Bye. Hey, Rob. This is Jim from Kent, Washington. This is a local call for me. Um, I ordered my... 256 gig silver 10x from the AT&T Next program right after midnight, and uh, went fairly smoothly. There were a couple of hiccups there in their ordering queue, but uh, ships uh, from uh, between the second and the tenth of uh, November. So I'm quite excited about it. Thanks, just thought I'd let you know. Hi, Rob. This is Steve from San Pedro, California. I ordered my iPhone 10 last night, just after midnight. It didn't seem to come online until sometime between 5 and 10 minutes after midnight, so I don't know if that's due to where I was at or if that was a delay that everybody saw. I use the uh, Apple Store app because I learned in the past how the uh, website seems to get overloaded and delayed and the uh, Apple Store app worked very well this time and last time for me. So I got my 64 gig uh, in gray and looking forward to it. I got an email right afterwards that said expect delivery in two to three weeks. So I don't know if that got me in uh, right up front or if I'm tier two or what. But anyway, looking forward to it. Uh, love your show. Have a good one. Hi, Rob. This is Phil from Norwich in England. I want to share the chronology of my iPhone 10 ordering this morning. At uh, 10 to 8, I logged on to the Apple Store app and to the web page, and both of them were showing we've got something new for you. At 5 past 8, nothing had happened. Neither the app or the web page were open. At 7 past 8, the web page came to life, but the app was still not working. By 10 past 8, there weren't any iPhone 10s on offer for delivery. Uh, by 12 past 8, I'd ordered mine. By 8.15, all the 256 gigabyte ones were all gone, and the silver ones were the first ones to sell out. At 17 past 8, I got my email confirmation, and by 8.40, all the 64 and 256 megabyte iPhones were gone in both colors. Just for um, information, I'm gonna try mine for 14 days and see how good it really is, and then I'll decide whether it's worth all the money or whether I should keep my iPhone 7. Really enjoy your show, and uh, thanks for doing all the good work you do. Bye for now. Jan from Las Vegas. First, I wanna thank you for turning me on to Lipson. It's a great service where I host my podcast. Okay, yesterday at 12 o'clock, I went on the iPhone app and kept refreshing, refreshing, refreshing until 12, about 12.08 at Pacific Coast time. And then I was able to, because I had the pre-order thing going on, that I already had the, the phone with the upgrade from Apple. It was a snap. About 8.09, I got confirmation that my phone would be delivered between November 11th and November 24th or something like that. And so I'm happy, and I got the Space Gray 256. 
I'm hoping that T-Mobile will come across so that I could use all the benefits of the new phone, and I will keep you in the loop. Thanks for what you do. Hi, Rock. It's uh, Robert from Silver Spring, long-time listener. had not called in a couple of years now. But I wanted to uh, tell you about my experience this morning purchasing the iPhone 10. I was up before 3, had my iPhone, iPad, and MacBook Pro out. It seemed that the store didn't open up, for me at least, until about 3.08, 3.09 before the store opened up. And that's on my MacBook. It was later on the, on the Apple Store app. Uh, it took a little while. The app, I mean, the, the Apple site was slow, so I wasn't getting the pictures of the carrier to know which one to click on because it's just getting a little question mark. So it took me a little while to get my place my order. Ended up getting a delivery date of November 17th through the 24th. But I was only on the store maybe three minutes tops placing the order. Maybe a little longer because I couldn't get Apple Pay to work. So I ended up having to pay my credit card because Apple Pay wasn't going through. Like always, great show. Uh, keep up the good work. Bye.